Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the show, Your Real Estate Today. Paul Jamison here, your host. So glad you're with us today from the Jamison family of real estate companies. That's Jamison Realty, Jamison Property Management, Jamison Property Investments. Here with Trez Stokes of Norwood Armstrong and Stokes. And the topic of this segment begins with the spoilers. And what the spoilers are, are people that look for ways to put a little spoilage in the real estate transaction. So you've had some spoilage in your real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, Paul, the biggest issue I see where spoilage comes into play is uh, verbal agreements outside of closing that blow up the day of closing. Wait, 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 hold on. So let's backtrack. There's a fundamental rule in real estate, right? Everything mm -hmm. in has to be in. In writing. Yeah, That's as it. you know. All right, so why are people making verbal contracts? It's a great question, man. It's a great question. Um, but, you know, for us, it's all about disclosure. Uh, and for agents, um, get it in writing, not just text messages. So we, we, we have agents come to us post-closing or buyers or sellers come to us post-closing and say, well, I, I've got the text message chain here. But, I mean, I guess that's better than the verbal agreement, but put it on paper and, and sign it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you have text messages and emails. They're like you say, they're better than the verbal. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how we, you and I work together in those situations. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for us, you know, if, if you're an agent, just uh, put it in writing, ask me to draft the, the agreement or the attorney that you're working with. Just ask them to put it in writing and disclose it. Let the attorney know about it. That way it's on the closing disclosure. That way it's uh, there's no questions. It, it's being handled by a professional and there's no dispute um, after the fact. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to ask Sandy to turn down her radio right now while we talk about something <laughs> lenders hate to hear about. Right. And that's personal property. Yeah. So you made a note about that. You want to share? Yeah, I did. I mean, I've, I've seen situations where sellers or buyers have agreed to buy sheds, lawnmowers, TVs, furniture. And when they go through the final walkthrough, it's not there. So, you know, we're kind of um, scrambling last minute to get these issues resolved. Um but I would say even if it's not on the closing disclosure, uh, it should be in writing. Um, if it's not on the closing disclosure, typically the attorney is, isn't privy to it and can't do much about it. Um, so for us, we can't really help if it's not on the closing disclosure. We're typically um, not aware of that or, uh, you know, uh, can't be involved in that transaction. Right. You know, when it comes to personal property, the, the only and best way to deal with it is a bill of sale yeah. at no value. You itemize the items, you put them together, everybody signs it, la, 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 down the road, right? If there's right. a price, there's a price, not a price, not a price. Lenders hate it. They, they don't want to see it. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to acknowledge it because it's stuff. And it's an right. exchange of money over stuff. They absolutely hate it. So here I am, got a client moving across country and they agree on some things. They go into the house, however, and somebody took down the mount for the television. Well, the mount for the television is included on the North Carolina offer to purchase as something you must include unless it is crossed off. And the mount for the television was not in the back of the truck, easy to get to. It was in the front of the truck, all the way in the front of the truck. So what do you do? Now, I had an answer because I had an angry buyer on the hands and a seller that it just was an inadvertent mistake. 
I bought a stinking wall mount and I gave it to him and said, here's your closing gift. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I took back the nice gift and I gave them a wall mount for their TV. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't take back the closing gift. I ate it, but the, <laughs> I drank it. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. But it's just really a funny thing because that you're exactly right, Trez. That's the kind of stuff that comes back to bite you. All right. And, and if it's something that needs to be rectified, I've even had it with remote controls. That's the worst. We don't know what box it is, where it is. Oh, remote controls. Oh, if I could only run from remote controls, that would be such a nice thing in life. All right. All right. The due diligence period. Do you see it still as a buyer beware or has it shifted? I think it's absolutely shifting. Um, I saw a contract today with uh, due diligence of 2000. We're seeing them 2000, 3000, 5000 uh, earlier this year. That wasn't the case. We were seeing due diligence uh, as high as six figures. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just for those that don't know, due diligence is basically when a buyer pays seller to go under contract to not sell to anyone else. The buyer has an opportunity mm -hmm. to inspect the house and uh, really just see if they want to continue to purchase the home. Uh, you know, if you put down six figures, it doesn't matter. There's no chance to uh, backing out. Um, so, yeah, we're seeing um, 2,000, 3,000 low due diligence where you can still live with yourself and, and back out of the house and move on to something you like better. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of the show is that, exactly. you know, they've gotten a lot lower. Um, but... You know, I think it should correlate to the price point of the home, um, but also the seriousness of the offer um, mm -hmm. and making sure that, it, you know, you have a good solid buyer because you don't want your house to get the stink guy. Right. right. And, and I just think um, earnest money in this environment doesn't really mean anything. I think it's all about that hard money deposit as to whether or not that contract is truly serious. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think um, I think what I continue to see related to that, too, is, you know, if your house is well cared for now and you've done a pre-inspection or you've done some work to the home and you've got that documentation, it's a it's a comfort level, right? It's a comfort level to the buyer when they put up that non-refundable deposit, right? So. So one of the things I wrote down is that um, that walkthrough that we talked about at, at the end, right before you close, is so critical, right, Trez? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for us, we've, we've seen houses that have caught on fire, car wrecks through houses, appliances missing, your, uh, your TV mounts, your fixtures, uh, you name it. So yeah, final walkthroughs is crucial. Um, gotta yeah, do it. I've had water leaks happen the night before, no fault of either party. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, you, uh, you gotta do that final walk because you know <laughs> they gotta get their stuff. The <laughs> the sellers gotta get their stuff out. You know, a lot of times you're not gonna want to record this thing until you've had it cleaned and and done, right? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's, it's another chance for, for me to help the buyer, too. Um, I can always draft a last-minute amendment to, to help them at closing. Um, I recently did a closing where, in their final walkthrough, they really loved the chandelier. The chandelier wasn't there. So, for us, uh, we drafted an amendment the day of where um, they had to return the chandelier. If they didn't, the buyer got the funds. So, I knew this to say at least they were protected because the chandelier never showed up. And uh, at least they would uh, buy them a new chandelier. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, you don't want the whole thing to blow up at the end, but sometimes there's just a few little small details that happen that can make that happen, you know? Yep. All right. So we'll be right back to with Trez Stokes, Norwood Armstrong and Soaps, myself, Paul Jamison, the show, your real estate today. You know, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about crawl space. 
And we're going to finish up with Trez on a couple of things around the closing. We'll be right back. News Talk 1110-993-WBT.